What is up everybody? This is Lyle, No Hippie Trucking and Transportation. Coming at you from the Petro in Perrysburg, Ohio. Posted up about 33 miles from my drop off at 0100. So got about 11 hours, maybe 12 hours to uh, start rolling out of here. What I was going to do was do my second part of uh, the last video I did, Problems with Prime Inc., my response to those. Uh, but I was looking through Facebook and I saw a post and somebody was having a hard time at a lease and very upset that he had breakdowns and not making any money and stuff like this. And, you know, hopefully this video can serve as a bit of a caution to some of you guys that are coming out here thinking about getting into a lease. Now, some people aren't going to have any problems and then they may maybe become successful doing a lease but when going into a lease or any business venture you need to make sure that you have your ducks in a row i have been a proponent of having money set aside before you even start a lease you know what i'm saying and it looks like to me a lot of the people that are coming into prime you know a lot of a lot of people just don't have life experience in general but I wouldn't say business experience is necessary, but a decent bankroll is going to be a good start. And I see a lot of people that are coming that want all of the upside to go and lease, and they don't want any of the downside of it. You know what I'm saying? And everybody's going to go through unfortunate stuff. You know, before I decided to bite off and get a second truck and have somebody run that second truck, you know what I had to think? I had to think about, do I have enough money set aside if my truck breaks down and the other truck breaks down? Do I have enough money to handle both of those trucks breaking down, paying my driver, <clears throat> even though I may not be getting paid? And you know what happened? That just happened. I haven't got paid, you know, in a couple, couple weeks. I mean, I just came off of home time, but you can't just get into these leases with just just thinking about the upside and you know I think one of the things that success leasing does is makes it almost too easy for people to get into it I mean I'll be honest with you and people are gonna maybe think I'm an asshole if I was running well you know personally I think that if somebody's gonna lease then they should have to provide a couple bank statements you know, maybe not a credit report because it's not going to be credit, you know, it's not going to be credit like that, but uh, at minimum, a couple bank statements to show that you got at least a little bit of money to weather the storm. And I don't know what that amount is. You know, personally, I tell people at a minimum, I mean, I mean, I feel even uncomfortable saying $5,000 because if I had $5,000, I would be feeling very uncomfortable in just in general, regardless of a lease or anything like that. But I mean, you have to have some money set aside. And, you know, this person said they weren't blaming an unsuccess lease or anything like that, but that rant sure did sound like uh, they were. And that may not have been the case, you know what I'm saying? But uh, in business, somebody's got to fail. There can never be a 100% success rate in business. You know, being able to weather the storm is what sets the people aside that are going to be successful and those that aren't. So if you happen to be on your trainer's truck or thinking about coming to Prime and, uh, you know, you're looking at your trainer and he's talking about going lease you got to look deep inside yourself and and think do i have the money set aside if my truck breaks down because you know what i mean i know success has like some kind of a little warranty or something on their truck or something like that but you know i gotta i gotta kind of bring back a little saying that i used to have in the car business when somebody used to be buying a used car that was out of warranty they'd say well you know, what happens if the car breaks down when I leave the lot? And I'd say, if the car breaks in half, you own both halves. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, you got to have that mindset that nobody's going to be there to bail you out. And to be honest with you, 
you know, success leasing does more, or just Prime in general, the 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 way they have everything integrated is already babying people enough. So you gotta at least just be able to pick up that little bit of slack, you know what I'm saying? So don't just look at, oh, you know, I'm gonna go lease and make all this money because I'll be honest with you, there's a lot of lease drivers out here that make a whole lot less than some company drivers. And that's just facts, you know what I'm saying? You know, you, you can come on here and see people that maybe are doing well, things like that, but behind the scenes, you know, there's a lot of people that aren't out there with the platform that are going through it, and they're going through it even in the best of times. Now, a lot of that has to do with them, but you have to be, you have to be, like your mindset going into the lease shouldn't just be, I just want a lease. Your mindset has to be, I got some bread stacked aside. If my truck breaks down, you know, if you're on a regular lease and you're not on a lease purchase, you already got breakdown pay. So that covers you a little bit. So you're not going to go too negative in it, but you got to be in the mindset that, you know, I mean, I wouldn't feel comfortable having less than a month set aside to pay all my bills on my house side and have, you know, five, six thousand dollars set aside minimum. That's me. Now, there's plenty of people that get out here doing these leases that everything goes perfect. They're not broke down. Everything's gravy and they become successful. But you for everybody that looks at just the positives and stuff like that. Trust me, there's somebody behind them that didn't things didn't go that well and the difference between them failing and possibly leaving prime uh is luck and then the other half may have had a little bit of money a little bit of money to withstand the storm so anyway i do think that you know to go along with my last video things that i think could possibly change at prime they make it too easy for some people. I mean, I often look at this and not to say there's anything wrong with somebody that's, you know, 21, 22, 23, 24 year olds aren't all created equal, but I think there's a, a lot of life experience that some older people have that make them a little bit more suited to deal with the ups and downs of uh, situations. I mean, just the fact, you know, I mean, I look back at some of the times when I was like seriously broke. I was like 23 years old and I had a cat and just moved back out to Colorado and I was so broke that I tried to feed my cat dog food because they had free dog food at the grocery store. And, uh, you know, I look back at those times and I'm like, okay, if I can make it through that, I can make it through anything. But if you're 21 years old, maybe you haven't gone through that. I don't know, but you just can't be looking at the upside of this and then when things don't go right then be all shocked and everything that you know something didn't go right because in the long run if you have that money to withstand the storm you will potentially if you know how to actually run a truck you will be successful it's just making it past those downsides and i've had some downsides myself just recently i had my other truck down my other truck wasn't moving for you know for a while had some bills on that truck. Then my truck had like a little air leak problem, which I'm about to be dealing with in Springfield. You know what? Boom. Told my other driver, you know what? Thanks for handling things. I, I got your back. You know what I'm saying? So if I wasn't set up for that, what would, what, what, what would the outcome have been? I'd had a driver that was just ass out. I mean, made a little bit of money, but Anyway, that's that's a totally different subject. It just more of you guys that are coming to Prime and thinking you're going to lease actually need to like think about this a little bit more because it's almost painful to read some of this stuff and and I mean painful that it the painful that some of the people going through this didn't think 
that this was an obvious situation that could have happened. Especially if they've been in prime groups listening to other people complaining about stuff like that. So it's not like, you know, I mean, maybe it could be, but potentially, you know, if you get a lease and, and your truck goes down, potentially you're not the first person that you've heard of going through this before. So you need to like set yourself up for that. I'm talking in circles right now anyway, but I'm about to come back here and uh, go to sleep. But think about this stuff. There is nothing wrong with going company first to build up your money. I mean, think about, I mean, a lot of, a lot of the people that are coming into this haven't been truck drivers, so they don't know anything about truck driving, may have just got out of training, so they're not even six months deep into trucking, and now all of a sudden they want to start a business with no money. I mean, it'd be different if you were like, well, I don't have any money, but you know, I do know how to barbecue. Uh, maybe I should start a barbecue business with no money. That makes more sense than being like, okay, well, you know what? I really don't even know how to back yet. And, uh, I'm not a hundred percent sure on how to run my hours of service, but you know what? Maybe starting a business where those things, uh, are important. You know, maybe that's not the best thing in the world. Maybe I should learn a little bit before I actually do it. So anyway, and then there's other people and I've talked to people. Listen, if you're retired, you know, I've spoke to a couple of people. One's retired or about to retire from the police, uh, you know, from the police department. Another one's uh, retired Air Force, you know, I think one of their houses is paid off or something like that and they got money set aside and all that kind of stuff. And if that's your situation, then by all means, at least there's, if you can weather the storm, by all means do it. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, I'm 23 years old and I, you know, my last job and this is, taking nothing away from Wendy's or Burger King or whatever because Burger King was one of my favorite jobs in my life but you know I just came from Burger King and I don't have any money set aside and you know I got a wife and a kid in swaddling clothing at home and you know I got some bills and I need to make some money right off the bat don't do it because then you're going to have that dumb look on your face when you have a breakdown and I mean, dumber than the face I had when I had a breakdown. I just had a dumb look on my face. I knew I was gonna get out of it, but I did have a dumb look. But you'd have that really dumb look on your face like, uh, now what? So think about this. I'm just tired of seeing these posts, of whether they're outright blaming prime or success leasing or whatever, or not. It's just, uh, I, Personally, I might be a little embarrassed to post that kind of stuff myself, but uh, anyway, whatever. Uh, I appreciate you guys stopping by No Hippie Truck and Transportation. I know I kind of came off a bit like an asshole in this video, but if I could just ca catch somebody's attention and let them think about the negatives that can happen in leasing instead of just looking at all the positives, I've done my job, and if I came off a little bit harsh, I apologize, but if it just saves one person from having that dumb look on their face, I've done my job. Anyway, thanks for stopping by No Hippie Truck and Transportation. I appreciate it. Comment, subscribe. I'm out.